Hi, and welcome to this QuickBooks training video from Tracy Bressler CPA. This is the fifth in our series on using inventory in QuickBooks. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of key reports for managing inventory. And we're also going to look at adjusting inventory as we take uh, cycle counts. So, let's start by looking at a couple of reports. I'll go to the Reports pull-down menu, to the Inventory section, and to the Inventory Valuation Summary. Uh, this report, you will see, lists the inventory items down the left side. It gives us a description. It gives us a quantity on hand. So, according to QuickBooks, we have 60 of these cabinet pulls on hand. It gives us the average cost, which in this case is $1.59. And we have this column, which is Asset Value. Asset Value is the on-hand quantity times the average cost. It's going to give us that $95.40 that you see there. Now, if you look all the way down this column, at the bottom there's a total. So this $23,939 and change is the amount of inventory that we have on hand. This should be the dollar value of our inventory asset account in QuickBooks. And we can do a check on that to be sure that the inventory portion of our program is actually matching the general ledger. We do that by looking at the balance sheet. So I'll go to Reports, Company and Financial, Balance Sheet, Standard, and as long as the date is the same on both reports, I can look down here and find the inventory asset value also on my balance sheet. Now those two numbers should be exactly the same. If they're not, it means there's an error or maybe several errors in your QuickBooks company file and you're going to want to find out what those are and get them corrected. That's a little hard to go through all that process in a training video as you may need to hire um, a QuickBooks Pro Advisor or someone to help you with that but you do want to get that fixed because if those numbers are not the same, you know there is an error in the file. Uh, let's look at another report. This time, let's go to Inventory and let's look at Inventory Stock Status by Item. Again, we have the items listed down the left side, descriptions, um, quantity on hand. In this report, we have a little bit more information. Uh, what's on sales order, uh, what's uh, tied up for pending assemblies, so forth, leaving us a, a column out here that says, okay, how many are available for sale? And you notice there's a column here with a check mark. And this check mark is in a column that says order. So QuickBooks is telling us we need to order this. Let's uh, use this item right here for, as an example. We need to order this item. Now, where does QuickBooks get that information? Why is it telling us that? Well, we look over here, and this item is exterior door frames. And so we proceed to the right, and there's a column here that says reorder point. Well, when the item is set up, there is a field that says reorder point. When this item, this exterior door frame, was set up, that field was filled in with the number 5, telling us that when our quantity gets down to, the, to uh, a quantity of 5, we should be reordering this item. Now, if we follow this line across to the right, we will see that our quantity is down to 2, so since uh, that number is below the reorder point, QuickBooks put a check mark in this column. One more quick report I want to point out to you is this physical inventory worksheet has a little information about all of the inventory items that we have in the system. And then it has a column here in order for us to handwrite the physical count. So we could take these forms and we could go through our uh, store or warehouse or whatever we have and we could actually do a physical count of the inventory items that we have uh, in stock and make sure they're the same, it's the same number as in QuickBooks, which, you know, there'll often be some small discrepancies. Hopefully, you don't have any large ones. If you do, that could be an issue that you need to look at. But there could be small ones. That's pretty common. So say there's maybe 15, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 58 of these cabinet pulls on hand rather than 60. In that case, we would have to correct that. And how do we do that? Well, we would go to the Vendors pull-down menu, Inventory Activities, and Adjust Quantity Value on Hand. Now, this form is going to let me correct the quantity of these items that I have. So, you see here are our inventory items. There's those cabinet, uh, um, I'm sorry, cabinet pulls right here. 
QuickBooks shows 60, we actually only have 58. I put the 58 in that column, QuickBooks is going to subtract 2. If you look down here at the bottom, it's going to subtract $3.18 from the value of the inventory that we have on hand. Let me show you one more thing here. This is not something you would use very often, but I should point out that it's here. And that's this checkbox right here that says Value Adjustment. If I check that, a couple of new columns appear uh, about the, uh, as far as pertaining to the value of the product. So we now have a current value, and that current value on the cabinet pulls was 95.40. And then the new value, which QuickBooks has computed to be at 92.22. Occasionally, you may have a situation where you want to change the cost of an inventory item. This is how you would do it. The most common reason for doing that is you are initially entering inventory. You're just starting to use it. You've created your inventory items, but you haven't purchased any inventory in QuickBooks, so there is no average cost in the system, in which case all of these numbers would be zero. And if that were the case, then I would be filling out this line by telling QuickBooks I had 58 cabinet polls and the value of those was $92.22. Ordinarily, so once you have QuickBooks uh, set up, ordinarily you won't be using that because QuickBooks knows what the average cost is and so if you're subtracting two from inventory it knows how much to subtract for that. I do need to tell QuickBooks what expense account to use for this adjustment. It's going to subtract $3.18 from the inventory asset account it needs to know where to put the other side of that entry. I'm going to use cost of goods sold, which will pop up a little message from QuickBooks asking me if I'm sure I want to use that cost of goods sold account. I'm going to say yes, I do. And that's it. All I have to do is save and close my entry, and that will lower the number of cabinet pulls that I have on hand, and it will also change the dollar amounts. So my balance sheet now would show an uh, inventory asset account value of $3.18 less than it did before. I hope this is uh, helpful to you and that you had some questions answered. We have other QuickBooks training videos on our website at tracycpa.com. I hope you'll pay us a visit and take a look at those as well. Thank you.